In this lesson, we'll go through some mental math and manual calculation skills that you'll need to excel on the executive assessment exam. So the quantitative section for the executive assessment does not provide a calculator. So you're going to have to manually calculate to solve those problems. However, the GMAC, the people who put forth the executive assessment, they don't highly value manual calculation as a premium skill. So you just have to have this as a foundational ability. So your calculations in the quantitative section should produce clean results or otherwise be approximated. So you shouldn't have to do too much convoluted math here. And you should be able to round if necessary when the math gets a little bit strange. But in the integrated reasoning section, an interface calculator is provided. So you're going to use that as a resource that's available in this section, the first section of the executive assessment, that isn't available in the concluding section, which is the quantitative section. And here, the exam expects you to be able to use that calculator for somewhat convoluted and clumsy calculations. So the strategic implications. The ability to manually calculate it is basically the first skill that you need to develop in order to achieve your quantitative section goals. You have to be able to manually do multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and then there's going to be some manual manipulations of things like exponents and radicals and fractions and decimals that are just baseline abilities that you're going to need to develop. And you can practice on mathaids.com. So that's math-aids.com with free drills that will allow you to improve your speed and accuracy in manual calculation. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in this lesson. So the way that humans calculate math is by using what are considered easy factors or multiples. So you want to seek factors of 2, 5, 10, 100, and a half. And the reason for this is it's biology. We have two hands, five fingers, and 10 toes, and those are the basis of our decimal system. If my hand didn't have five fingers and instead everyone's hand had, say, seven or eight fingers, we'd be working off of a completely different math system. So we want to rely on what is intuitive for manual calculation. And a lot of that starts with just doubling and halving values. So if each digit is less than or equal to four, you can simply double each digit. So for instance, 24 times two, you just double the two, get to four, double the four, get to eight, 48. 204 times two, that's just going to be 408 because I double the two in the hundreds digit up to four and double the four up to eight. And there's 408. But if you have a digit that's greater than four, you want to double the leftmost digit first and then work to your units digit. So for instance, 596 times two, we've got digits greater than four. So we'll start by just doing 500 times two. And then we're going to do 90 times two. And then we're going to do six times two. And we just sum all of those values individually. So we've got 500 times two becomes 1,000. 90 times two becomes 180. And six times two becomes 12. So we just add all of those values up. 1,000 plus 180 is 1,180 plus 12 is the 1,192 that you see on the screen. And if the units digit is even, you can just divide the leftmost digit by two first and work to your units as well. So for instance, 476 divided by two, well, I'm gonna take 400 and divide that by two. And then I'm gonna add 70 divided by two. And then I'm gonna add six divided by two. So 400 divided by 2 is going to be 200, 70 divided by 2 is 35, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, and I sum those values up to get to 238. And doubling and halving are the probably easiest intuitive manual calculation skills that you can build quite quickly on your own. So continuing the idea of the biology, you can proportionally manipulate by factors of 10 pretty easily as well. So if you multiply by 10, you just shift your decimal one place to the right. So for instance, if I did 2.3 times 10, that just becomes 23. I shift that decimal one place to the right and it becomes 23.0 or just 23. If I did 23 times 10, I just shift the decimal one place to the right and insert a zero, so 230. If you multiply by 10 to the n power, you shift the decimal n places to the right. So for instance, 2.3 times 100 is 2.3 times 10 to the second. So I shift the decimal right two places, I get 230. If I did 2.3 times 1 million, which would be 10 to the sixth, 
I shift that decimal right six places and get 2,300,000. And if you divide by 10 to the n power, you shift your decimal n places left. So for instance, if I did 590 divided by 10 to the first, I just get 59. 590 divided by 100, I'd shift the decimal two places because 100 would be 10 to the second power, and I'd get 5.9. And if I did 590 divided by 10,000, or 10 to the fourth, I shift that decimal left four places and I get 0 0.059. So again, just use that shifting mechanism to proportionally manipulate by factors of 10 very easily by maneuvering your decimal. Then you can expedite your addition and subtraction even by seeking factors of 10 to simplify your manipulation. So for instance, we've got 484 plus 72 here. You can shift the two from 484 to 484 from 72 to reimagine this as 486 plus 70. It's going to be the exact same. And your units digit is going to remain 6 because you're just adding 70 and that 0 is going to remain the same digit. So all I have to do is add the hundreds and tens digits. So I go 448 plus 7 gives me 55 and that becomes my 550 and I leave the extra 6 to determine that 486 plus 70 is 556. So again, just easy ways to make the manipulation more simplified for yourself. Now, if we did 973 minus 81, I'll subtract one from each value to reimagine this as just 972 minus 80. Again, simplify. So then what we do is the units digit is going to remain 2 because I'm just subtracting 80 and there's no change in the units digit since 80 has a units digit of 0. And we just subtract the hundreds and tens digits, so 97 minus 8 is going to be 89, and that's going to leave us with the 2, or 892 is the result of 973 minus 81. So you can see how we use the same concepts over and over and over to simplify the mental math. You can also expedite your multiplication by seeking factors of 10. So, for instance, if we've got 48 times 72, we might recognize that the closest and easiest multiple of 10 near 48 is 50. So what that means is I can just find what 72 times 50 is and then work from there. So 72 times 100, from what we just established, just means shift the decimal place over two places because 100 is 10 to the second power. So 72 times 100 would be 7200. And half of that product is going to be 72 times 50. And that, of course, is going to be 3600. Because if I take my 72 and divide by 2, I get 36 and I just keep the zeros. So 72 times 50 is 3,600. Then all we have to do is subtract two 72s to get to the exact 72 times 48 that we were seeking, knowing that 48 times 72 is the exact same as 72 times 48. Addition and multiplication, order does not matter in the operation. So now we just got to do 72 times 2, which is 144. And we're going to subtract that 144 from the... 3,600 that we had because you basically are just extrapolating the distributive property in your head. So we know that 72 times 50 minus 72 times 2 is going to be equal to 72 times 50 minus 2, which is equal to 72 times 48, which was our original multiplication problem. And if we take 3,600, subtract out the 100, and then subtract out the 44, well, 3,600 minus 100 will be 3,500. 3,500 minus 40 is going to be down to 3460 and minus four more gets me the 3456 that is the product of 48 and 72. And this is how you can do all of your math manually, even though it's probably a harder question than you'll see and a harder operation here than you'll see in the quantitative section of the executive assessment. Now, long division. So with long division, you're just going to want to manipulate manually. Uh, long division is really just bad marketing. It doesn't take that long. It seems like it's going to, but you're just going to set up the structure as you probably recall it. So let's take a look at the long division example. So we've got 24 going into 5,520. So 5,520 divided by 24. So 24 is going to go into 55 twice because 2 times 4 is 48. Then we subtract out the 48 from the 55, the first two digits, and we get seven. And then we have to drop down the two, and we've got 24 goes into 72 three times. And three times 24 is exactly 72, so we subtract out the 72, we get zero, and that zero just goes as our final digit. And we discover that 
5,520 divided by 24 is 230. So I mentioned the website mathaids.com earlier in this lesson. It is just a great free resource for you to practice manual calculation for the quantitative section of this exam. So they're, they're dynamically produced worksheets. So what that means is you can never run out of worksheets on mathaids.com. So if you go over there, there's just a giant left-hand navigation and you can click on any of the topics and you'll be able to create brand new worksheets of whatever content you're covering. And all of the executive assessment calculation topics are covered at mathaids to some degree. So how do we use this resource? Well, first you wanna to try to do two to four worksheets a day and they shouldn't take you that long per worksheet. They're you know basically like elementary style worksheets. And if you go to the website the first time, it'll probably prompt you with what grade you're working on. You can just ignore that and X out of that pop-up. There are quite a few pop-ups because it's a free resource, but you'll just want to, tr to work through two to four worksheets a day. Shouldn't take you more than five to 20 minutes in total. You wanna focus on areas of difficulty more frequently. It's just human nature that folks tend to do the things that they're better at more frequently. Instead, you wanna find the problem areas and focus on those. You wanna practice both written manual calculation and mental math. So you could do obviously all of the things that we saw in this lesson mentally or writing it out and you wanna do both. And it also can function as a math warm up before any real quote unquote executive assessment, quantitative practice drills, or practice exams, and even your actual official test, uh, test date, you can use this as just a mental stretching exercise. We know that the executive assessment is more of a skills-based activity than an academic or memory-based activity. So you want to take the time to just do a warm-up. You wouldn't try to complete a, uh, a musical performance without running the scales before. Uh, attempting the performance. You also wouldn't get on to, say, a uh, sports field without stretching. So this is basically your mental stretching before you do the actual practice problems. And you always want to begin with what I like to call the top six math aids topics. And you can use the search box in the math aids website, and it's up in the top right hand corner, to just search for things that you need, you know you need to work on that are outside of the top six. Things like negatives or word problems are often in that category. And you can look for anything there. It's going to show up if it's on the executive assessment from a calculation perspective, it's on MathAids. And honestly, MathAids has a lot more than you'll need for this test. So what are the top six MathAids topics? Well, first, multiplication. So you need to be able to do your times tables and you can get some advanced times drills. That's one of their selections. And you basically want to get up to 15 squared. That's going to be where you want to be. And you can do either single or multiple digit multiplication worksheets to practice the skills that we just illustrated here in this lesson. You'll also want to do division. So you'll want to do the long division worksheets. And you can do times tables, time drills worksheets here as well, single multiple digits. And you probably don't need to go be beyond two digits, but it's just good practice for division. And then we've got exponents and radicals. They're in the same location. So if you click on exponents, you get radicals too. If you click on radicals, you get exponents too. It's just the somewhat antiquated organization that they have on the website. It's again, a free resource. So it's a little bit clumsy, but you can use the exponents with multiplication and division. And you definitely want will want to try simplifying radicals because that's the kind of thing that can show up on the test maybe once in a quantitative section. And you'll want to try to memorize to a degree or at least make your times tables more intuitive for exponents up to 15 squared, so 15 by, by 15, and 10 to the third, or 10 times 10 times 10. So you'll want to know those values to maximize your efficiency, because again, this is a skill set that the exam doesn't necessarily value as much as the average test taker might expect them to. Now, we then have what I like to call our math ambidexterity trio, starting with fractions. So you want to try adding and subtracting three fractions worksheets, so you practice the process of finding a common denominator, summing your numerators and things of that nature. And you can also do multiplication of fractions with cross canceling because that is definitely a skill that the exam really rewards is your ability to simplify factors from numerators and denominators. You'll also want to practice some decimals. So you'll want to add and subtract worksheets with decimals as practice because that again is just going to build your ability to manipulate using decimals. And you may also want to consider multiplying by powers of 10 with decimals because ultimately 
to simplify decimals, in many cases, you want to use what is known as scientific notation. So that's 10 to some power, either 10 to the positive power or negative power, because if you do 10 to a positive power, it shifts your decimal to the right. If you do 10 to the negative power, it shifts the decimals to the left. And then lastly, in our ambidexterity trio is going to be percentages. And you want to do percentage calculation worksheets. And you may want to go into the word problems and find percentage word problems because percents are definitely one of the concepts that the exam deals with in terms of word problems very frequently. So you may want to go to that word problem subheading on the left hand side, navigation of mathaids.com to get percent word problems. And you want to be math ambidextrous for your non integer calculations, calculations. This is hugely important. Whatever formula or format your answer choices are in. So if your answer choices are in decimals, you want to do your calculations in decimals. If your answer choices are in fractions, you want to do your calculations in fractions. If your answer choices are in percentages, you want to do your, percent, your calculations in percentages. Because if you force yourself to do your calculations only in one format and are converting over and over again, you're taking more time than a student who is more able to work in all three formats. It's like being a basketball player and only being able to shoot with your right hand. Sometimes it's better and less defended with the left hand. So you want to become able to work through whatever format the non-integer is in, in the native format of the choices without having to convert and waste that extra time. So go over to mathaids.com and try some of our mental math practice problems to build these skills that you'll need for the executive assessment quantitative section where a calculator isn't allowed.